This video is brought to you by Dr. Kristen R. Bromley's Guitar Method Book Series and Online Music Academy. Hi there, I'm Dr. Kristen Bromley. Welcome to my Online Guitar Academy. I'm thrilled that you are here. In this quick answer episode, I'm going to answer the question, how do you play an A7 chord on the guitar? So, go ahead and take a look up here. The chord symbol would just be the A and then a 7. Nothing else, just A and a 7 for playing A7. If there's anything else, then it's a different type of chord. So, we'll start with a little bit of the theory. What are the pitches in an A7 chord? Well, we have an A, we have a C sharp, we have an E, and then we have a G. This chord comes right out of the notes in an A mixolydian scale. So a major scale with a flatted seventh. That's another way of looking at this chord is it's a major chord with a flatted seventh. We'll look a little bit here with the numbers. So from the mixolydian mode, that's a mode that has a ma it's a major scale with a flatted seventh and that one aligns with this chord. It's the basic one that we all think of in the theory terms, music theory terms, when we're thinking of it, of the note, of the scale that the A7 chord comes from. It comes from an A mixolydian scale. That scale, the A is the first step, the C sharp is the third, the E is the fifth, and then that G is our flatted seventh. So, intervallically, meaning the distance between two pitches, our A is known as the root and so the root is the starting pitch of the scale, it's also the starting pitch of the chord, and it's usually the lowest note of the chord, and it's the, the pitch that the chord is named for. So the A that we have up here in the chord symbol is an A because the A is the root pitch. So above the root, the C sharp is a major third. So A, C sharp. The, the E is a perfect fifth above the A. So, the perfect fifth interval. And in and of itself, those three notes as a triad make an A major chord. And then the G is a minor seventh, or a flatted seventh above the A. So, in making this chord, we have A, C sharp, E, G. If I play each one of those notes individually, it becomes an arpeggiated chord. There's multiple ways to voice these chords. We won't always see them in closed position, A, C sharp, E, G. We can spread it out. We can double pitches. Once in a while, the fifth will even be omitted. So let's take a look at the actual voicings on the guitar. We'll start with this one up here in the upper right-hand corner because that's our first position one, the one that we most commonly play when we're playing songs. And then we've got the bar chord versions that we'll take a look at as well. So if you need help with how to read these type of ta tablature diagrams, you can take a look at my quick answer video on that. But I'll just go ahead into playing this chord. So our middle finger, we're not using our index finger, our middle finger is at the second fret of the fourth string. Our ring finger is at the second fret of the second string. Then the fifth, third, and first strings are played openly and the sixth string is omitted. It's not played at all. familiar with how to play the A chord, all you got to do is take off that pitch that would normally be in the middle of those. That's how we're getting the G into the chord. So by theory, this is voiced with the root, then the fifth, then the flatted seventh, then the third, then the fifth. So that's how that voicing goes, A7. Okay, we'll take a look at a couple of these bar chords then, the classic bar chord ways of playing this chord. With the first one, we are barring at the fifth fret, and our index finger is going to play the first, second, fourth, and sixth strings in that bar, so it's playing four of them, that's pretty good. Then our middle finger is going to go at the sixth fret on the third string. Our ring finger is going to go at the 7th fret on the 5th string. So just like so. Now, with this bar chord, the, the theory behind it, or the pitches are, we go root 5, flat 7, 3, 5, root. That's how that one's played. If we needed one 
up high, we could go ahead and bar at the 12th fret, which is pretty high. We're going to not play the 6th string, so a lot of times when I'm playing just 5 string bar chords, I'll set my index up against that 6th string just to mute it a little bit, so if I do strum it, it doesn't come out. I just, I just played a, a minor 7th chord instead of a dominant 7th chord. The, um, our ring finger is going to play on the 4th string at the 14th fret, and our pinky is going to play on the 2nd string at the 14th fret. And then strings 1, 3, and 5 will ring against the bar, so they're played with our index finger, and it's as simple as that. You might notice that these two look an awful lot alike. The A7 shape that we're playing up here at the 12th fret is the exact same voicing as what we play in first position, only it's one octave higher. So just like that. And as a matter of fact, when I'm teaching bar chords, I would say this is the A7 shape, even if I put it somewhere else and it's D7 or E7 or F7 or whatever. So here it's A7 again. Though. The theory goes root, 5, flatted 7, 3rd, 5. That's how that voice is out. There is one other option that sometimes gets played that I will play sometimes. And this is kind of taking our C7 shape, if you use C7, and playing it up high. With this one, our index is going to go with the 10th fret on the 2nd string. Our middle is going to go with the 11th on the 4th string. Our ring finger is going to go with the 12th on the 5th string. And our pinky is going to go at the 12th on the 3rd string. We won't play the top string or the bottom string, so it's just the inside four strings of the guitar. With this one, there is no fifth to the chord. It goes root, three, flat seven, root. That's what we're playing there. There is no room to finger it. Sometimes the pitches that we would need are actually on the same string. So to play the flatted seventh, we've taken out the fifth of what would be just an otherwise, otherwise an A chord. But the fifth and the flatted seventh are on that same string when voicing it this way, so the fifth gets omitted. Sometimes the, fourth, the fifth is omitted from a chord in cases of adding the seventh, but the fifth is kind of felt anyway because of the overtone series, so we can actually do that. Taking away the third or the root would be problematic, but when we take away the fifth, we can actually get away with it okay. Alright, I hope that helps with A7. I hope you're having a blast doing music, and I hope to see you again. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For more in-depth lessons and to progress through a free guitar course, check out my Guitar 101 series on YouTube and my Guitar Method books, which all come with access to hours of in-depth video lessons. You can find more information about me and my products at kristenbromley.com. Take care.